Now the sixth step is also the first principle of HACCP. It is to identify and assess hazards with the incoming materials, such as ingredients, the processing line, and the processing environment. Your objective is to identify all potential hazards that are a threat to consumer safety. In identifying hazards, consider the biological, allergenic, chemical, and physical hazards of the ingredients. Also consider all process steps and whether hazards could be introduced at each step. There are three aspects to consider in hazard analysis. First, identify hazards associated with ingredients and incoming material. Each food ingredient should be checked for whether it could be a source of contamination, if it's something that sustains the growth of microorganisms, whether it's a microbial inhibitor, and whether there are any chemical or physical hazards. Next, identify hazards associated with each of the processing steps. Review your process flow diagram, plant schematic, and employee traffic patterns. After identifying ingredient and process hazards, it's time to identify hazards associated with operating practices. Observe your operations long enough to be confident they are the usual process or practice. Observe the hygienic practices of employees. Look for cross-contamination after processing. If you're uncertain whether hazards exist in the ingredients or can be introduced in the process or operating practices, measurement and laboratory testing could be needed. Be sure to follow this up by analyzing the collected data so you can assess risks and set limits. All the information collected so far will help you in identifying hazards. Once hazards have been identified, the risk of each one needs to be assessed. Risk is a combination of two things. One is the probability of a hazard being present in a food product. The second is the severity of the consequences of being exposed to that hazard. So if there is a high likelihood of a hazard being present and the severity of consequences are high, then the overall risk is considered to be high. The seventh step of HACCP is the determination of critical control points, or CCPs. This is also the second HACCP principle. To identify critical control points, a team approach is best, since there's a considerable amount of discussion and science involved. The HACCP decision tree is an essential tool to help you identify CCPs. CCPs are selected based on a hazard assessment and operational procedures. Remember, a critical control point is needed if there's any risk of illness or injury resulting from the failure of an operation to prevent or minimize contamination, kill microorganisms, or inhibit bacterial growth. The eighth step of HACCP is to establish critical limits for each critical control point, which is also the third principle of HACCP. Please note that from this point on, each HACCP step mentioned is also a corresponding principle of HACCP. To know more about the seven principles of HACCP, please refer to Module 1. The most common parameters used for critical limits are time, temperature, water activity, pH, amount of preservatives, antibiotic residues, and microbiological and sensory information. Critical limits are set to ensure control of health hazards. They can be based on government regulations, industry standards, company standards, and scientific data. Make the criteria understandable and to the point, so there's no confusion among employees. Displaying the critical limits next to the critical control points is an excellent way to help employees identify when the process is out of control. This is usually done by detailing the critical limit on the CCP monitoring record. It's vital to monitor your CCPs and record the data. And this is the ninth step to implementing HACCP, monitor critical control points. Once your control measures are in place and food safety criteria has been established, decide on effective monitoring procedures. To ensure food safety, you must establish a monitoring schedule. Continuous monitoring using automated methods is best. 
Also, in some cases, regulations require continuous monitoring, such as using a chart recorder when pasteurizing milk. For batch processes, it may be necessary to monitor every batch of product or second batch in large volume production, where thousands of kilograms of products are produced in an hour and depending on the CCP, it may be necessary to monitor every five minutes. Employees need to know why monitoring is necessary. They also need to be trained to conduct the testing. And they need to be shown what action to take if there is a deviation. Or in other words, when a critical limit has not been met. But we are getting ahead of ourselves here. Monitoring is best accomplished with quick, easy methods, so a problem can be identified and corrected immediately. Monitoring can include chemical measurements. Examples include measuring pH, residual chlorine, percentage of salt, and sugar concentration. Physical measurements include temperature and or time, water activity, and metal detection. Now the tenth step to implementing HACCP is to establish corrective action or deviation procedures. When results show that critical limits aren't met, prompt corrective action must be taken. The corrective action will depend on the potential hazards associated with the product. This might include increasing processing temperature, reheating or reprocessing, adjusting quantities of preservatives, stopping production, or holding product and investigating. To maximize your product safety, the right action is necessary to correct any deviations that happen.